The extract command can be used in a variety of ways. Most people use the extract command if you want to get a reduced data set of your current data. So if it's greater than $100,000 or if it equals transaction type A, B, whatever. And that'll get you a much smaller data set to work with. There are a, another way of using extract is to basically append files together where you can put two files on top of one another. You have to be a bit careful and we're going to talk about some of that. However, uh, the, the final data file will literally be one file on top of another and it won't be sorted, let's say, on vendor number or something like that. And then the last would be merging files together using ACL's merge command. So now this is separate than extract, but it will merge two files together and sort them. And I will be honest that I mostly will use the extract append as opposed to merge, and it's just personal preference. However, the merge command will work perfectly for you, sort the file for you as well, which is always a nice bonus. Now that we're in the sample data files in ACL, we're taking a look at just a simple invoice file from a long time ago. And let's say we wanted to data extract, and we'll, in this case, we're going to select record. However, you can select fields and just select a certain set of fields. So you could select just, you know, let's say these three fields. You do have to make, if I hit OK, by the way, nothing comes over. So you do need to select a few fields, hit that bring it over button, and uh, it also just a, a note on the fields. If we wanted to put enter date first and then check date second and God knows uh, maybe the invoice date uh, third which is probably in here somewhere I'm just uh, having trouble finding it invoice date down here uh, and then check date next to that you can line up things however you'd like them to be lined up and then that will be in the resulting data file so we can hit OK and do that however I'm going to select the record and what that'll do is it won't hard code anything so if I had any calculated fields here it would which we don't but it would hard code those calculated fields and make them physical fields in this case in the record selection it is just going to extract it just like the record is right now if there's any calculated fields those calculated fields would stay calculated you could go in and fix the calculations if you do it on the fields you lose the calculations so I'm just noting some of these things and let's just do something simple if, in this case I see the enter's names here, let's say I just wanted to take a look at enter initial equal to JL, and I see that that's JL there. What I like to do whenever I'm doing these types of, of uh, extract statements is I like to put an all trim on this, and an L trim, by the way, would work fine as well. But all trim, what that'll do is it'll remove all the spaces from that field, and carry over therefore to the left so in in other words if if what happened in this field is you had let's say a, a blank space JL something like that in that field ACL will not find that particular item if we say equal to JL because it's actually looking for the blank space so again L trim or all trim is a great way to kind of bring the data over to the left and it, L trim then in this case of the enter initial equal to JL. I will do this to a new file. This is again personal preference, but I, I like to create files such as extracted or uh, you know sorted and, and because ACL tends to create files, these are more like play files for me and I'll just keep overwriting them. And it, it's a good way of data management if you're just playing around. If you are trying to create a final table that, that will be utilized as a work paper, etc., uh, you, you might actually want to have something a lot more, you know, JL entries and then have, say, a date after it or maybe work paper number 0102 or, or something like that. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it real simple and make it extracted. So now that I have my if statement, I know I've set record and I've gone to two extracted, we're going to use that output table, you don't have to. It will now extract all of the enter initial JL to a new table called extracted. 
Now I wanted to show another practical example of the extract command. It will be using extract if, but it will be part of a script and we'll be using dialogues and variables to produce the if statement. So I, I think it's a good time to, to do this practical example. And we're going to talk about above approval limits. In order to test for whether or not invoices have been added together to try to get a larger purchase of something but avoid an approval limit, what we can do is we can summarize invoices between an approval limit, let's say $10,000, and let's say 5% below that limit or whatever percentage you want to put in. So, you know, 5% below the $10,000 limit or $500, so between $9,500 and uh, $9,999, 0.99, uh, would be the items that would be uh, extracted and put into the file called under approval limit. And then we're going to summarize those invoices by vendor number uh, to the under approval limit file, at which point we could filter that file and look for items that are over let's say five or, or two or three. I mean, it depends how many you care to look at. But but in, in essence, if, if it was uh, $9,999, if there were two of them, a uh, you know, person was trying to buy something maybe larger than $20,000 or close to it, or, or it, it, they in some cases I've seen as high as 20 that have been added together and actually when you look at the invoices that came from the vendor, the actual invoice would have on it one of 20, two of 20, three of 20, to add up to the 20 of 20. And as we go back into ACL, we can look at the venmult script. And again, like, like normal, we'll take a look here, but this dialog will actually open up the paid invoice file. And then we'll have other dialogues to ask us other questions. Like, let's look at this one. This will be the fields that are utilized in the extraction. And the second one here should be setting the limits. So we'll be setting not only what is the approval limit, but what is the variation percentage? Do you want it to be, you know, 5%, 10%, etc.? And what the script is going to do is it's going to first calculate a range. Uh, and, and that range will be based upon the approval and the limit above. So let's take a look at this. So what this limit is doing is it's, it's first using the include statement or, or function to remove any type of characters other than a number and uh, then creating a value with, with two decimal places. And that is then divided by 100 to create a percentage uh, limit in this case. So that then will be used uh, down below in the range where it's going to take the approval, which is calculated very similarly, and it's going to minus out that limit, let's say 5%, times the approval. So in this case, it'll end up being about 90, I think it's 9,500 would be if, if we put 10,000 in as the actual limit. So in the extract statement below, which is the, the main one, we're just then going to be extracting if the invoice amount is greater than that range and less than the approval limit, which you can see right there. So as we look at the rest of the script, there really isn't much else here. So why don't we run this script just so we can get a sense of how it works. And we'll continue on here. We're going to select the paid invoice file. And then we'll just select all the fields that it's asking for. Vendor name, number, invoice number, invoice date, OK, and, and then I'll select the OK button. I will use 10,000. I think that'll work. And even though in this script we actually state it as 5, because we will be dividing this by 100 as part of the range calculation that we do. And by hitting OK, hopefully we can find a few here. Well, unfortunately, there aren't any that have multiples in that range, which is a good thing. And what this did was it not only extracted, but then summarized on vendor number accumulating the invoice amount 
for that particular vendor and that, that's what you see there as the actual count. Uh, if we had more than one that would be something of a concern and, and something to look into and like I said if you find 21 you definitely want to take a look at that as well. Now we're going to move on to the extract append command to show you how to put two files together and the two files I'm going to work with are the paid invoice file and the prior paid invoice file. So these files have the exact same layout and the exact same data structure from a, a file naming, from a type, from a length, start, length, everything. Everything's the same. And that's a good thing because in order to extract a pen, we need to have that. So we're going to do this first, you know, in a format where things are very nice and, and put together, and then we'll do it in a format where things are different and, and kind of show you the difference there. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this paid file, and let's imagine I want to take the paid file and the prior paid invoice file and put one on top of another. So I'm going to take this paid file and a couple of things I could do. I mean, I could extract the fields if I'd like to and just extract a few fields from this. But in this case, again, I'm just going to extract the record because I know that the file structure is the same. And we'll, we'll talk about in a second how to check that. And we'll then go to a file called Extracted Append. And now I have a file called Extracted Append, which is the same file as the paid invoice file. I'm going to then take the prior paid invoice file which only has 380 records, mind you. Uh, the first one had 729, and again, you know, I can go to the table layout and check that the start and lengths are all the same, but let me just extract this to record, and we'll, we're going to be a little careful here. I'm going to hit the To button, and I'm going to Extracted Append, so that's the file that I'm going to, and I'm going to actually select it, and, and my rationale there is sometimes people can get this wrong where you know you kind of put a underscore there because that underscore is here but but actually isn't in the FIL uh, and it, it can get you to a wrong place so I'm just going to select it again from using the to button just to be safe and then in the more button and this is the the key you have to select append to existing file now if I don't it will overwrite the file and my my new file called extracted append will have 380 records but if I append to the existing file I now have 1109 which is the combination of 729 records and also down here 380 records so that's the final extracted append 1109 now imagine it didn't go so well and, and let's go back to start here and let me extract data. This time I'm going to extract the check date, check number, and enter initials just for three different fields here. And we're going to do this to that file extracted append. I'm just going to do this a bit quickly and I am going to overwrite that file. So now I'm just going to have these three fields in that file. I'm going to go back to now the prior paid invoice file and I'm going to extract data and a little bit differently here I'm going to now select the general ledger reference, the check number and say the enter date as, as three different fields and uh, we'll hit OK there and I'm going to go to 2 and I'm going to go to this extracted append table again and we're going to append to existing file now and hit the OK button and what's interesting here is, you know, things look good, right? It, it, for the first 729 records, things are going to look okay. And then it's going to get a little fuzzy, you know, and it's it's just something where now we're going to have numbers and dates. And, and what's happening here is you've put two different record structures with two different uh, field uh, formats on top of one another. And it just leads to data that is just, let's say, a little bit messed up. So you have to be careful when you're doing this extract append and let me just uh, head back here to this paid invoice file to make sure that everything lines up right. Now, uh, uh, I, I went to the edit table layout to show you that, but another way of doing this is to select or type in the display into the show command line, so window show command line, that's up here. And if you type display of this table, that will give you the display of the table. And it's a little bit easier to look at. You could print it. But what I did, just to be a little bit different here, 
is I actually put this into Excel. I'm just bringing this over so you can see this. I actually copied and pasted the prior file and the current file into an Excel file here. And what I checked was, you, you could check all the fields this way, but I, I used an if statement over here, even though this is an ACL class, I just show you this if statement. If, and let me just double click on this, if this D6 field does not equal the I6 field, it'll put the word difference there. And notice how this is a date, and this is ASCII, and this is numeric, and this is ASCII. And I, again, some of these don't matter, but my suggestion is make everything look the same. And you can go one step further than I did here. And instead of saying field different, you can do is the start length different, is the length different, etc. Using this type of tool in Excel, or you could just manually look at things and just kind of eyeball it and go down the list. But one way or another, just make sure your files are the same structure, same field length, uh, same uh, start length type and field name before you, you take any sort of part of an extract append command. Now what we can do is show you the merge command. I have the paid invoice file open with 729 records and I do know that my prior paid invoice file is exactly the same. So I open that up as a secondary table. table. And, and while you could have multiple keys, I, I'm just going to work off of the vendor number right now, which, which means it's going to sort the two tables and uh, put them, merge them together, but sort them on this vendor number field. So they'll, they'll be nice and organized. And we're going to go to a file called merge, just to, to keep this simple. And I will hit the OK button. And magically, we've now merged together these two tables where, as we said, the extract append had 1,109 records. We also have that in this merge command down below here. Uh, however, only difference here is we've now sorted this file on vendor number, if I can find it. I think it's just over here. And uh, notice here now, this is all sorted on vendor number.